Turn What's up, you world? It's me and Alex Warner, aka if you jumped in, I'm watching. I'm reacting to um Gamescom. Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> so yeah, um. Oh, I need to turn the chat off because it's distracting me. Let me uh, get my uh, hat. Let's go to my Jurassic World Evolution Complete Edition coming November 3rd. Right, let me make sure I'm in frame. Now, I'm willing to bet, um... That's it, that's all we have for you in this very pre-show. Oh, that was a pre-show? excited for the actual opening night. Oh, that was the pre- oh, that was the pre-show. <laughs> oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> Black Ops Cold War, that mysterious PlayStation 5 demo. Some things we've probably never heard of before. I think it's going to be a very good show. I'm personally excited about it. Me. I should thank you, actually, for putting up with my nonsense for the last 20 minutes. It is appreciated, but seriously... Um, let me move all this out of the way. Okay. To take control of our world. When we feel out of place, disconnected, and divided, there are always Seems like questions. Do we have what it takes? Oh, uh, I think this is, uh. To heroes? What we doing here? I think this is an okay, uh, we bring the world together. uh, can We celebrate who we are. Okay, um, let me, uh, minimize this. The future of minimize this Welcome window, to too. Gamescom, opening night I don't know if I've ever watched this presentation before. I don't think I ever have. <sighs> Like in my life. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff Keely, and welcome to Gamescom Open hey. Night Live 2020. Huh. Now, this year, Gamescom is of course a little different than normal. Yeah. And I hope all of you and your families are safe and healthy at home. Thank in you. 2020, games have comforted and connected us more than ever. Hell yeah. With the launch of PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X later this year, games are only going to get better. Mm -hmm. Well, all summer, I was hopeful we could get to this very moment, a yeah. big live showcase filled with more than 35 games to kick off Gamescom 2020. Okay. Tonight, you'll get a first look at Fall Guys Season 2 hey. and an extended gameplay demo of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart cool. for PlayStation 5. All right. Plus, we might have a couple surprises along the way, too. I'm hoping but Smash Bros. before we start, I want to acknowledge and thank all the game developers, marketers, and publishers who have worked under challenging circumstances yeah. to keep us entertained. Yeah, man. This show is nothing without them or my production team, and doing a show at this scale safely is not easy, no. especially when all of you at home have some pretty insane expectations. I hope tonight reminds you why you love to play games. And with that, we're going to move on to our first Ooh. game, with a game that was just announced yesterday, yeah. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold, Cold War. War. Yeah. And joining me is Dan Vondrack from Graven to tell us about the game and give you an exclusive sneak peek. Dan, how you doing? <laughs> Good, Jeff. Thanks for having me here. This is uh, been a dream project for us to work on from, the, from nearly the beginning of development. We knew Black Ops Cold War was going to be a direct sequel to Black Ops 1, and oh. we loved the idea of returning to the pillars of yep. the Black Ops franchise. Deniable operations, conspiracy ground in history, yeah. and that shadowy world of paranoia. And we get to mix all those together, drop the player into the 1980s at the height of the Cold War, <laughs> and I it's see. really something that we know would feel relevant to today, and also uniquely Black Ops. Well, you start playing with Black Ops, everyone wants to know characters. We saw yesterday in the reveal trailers, you know, some familiar faces. So, you know, Woods, Mason, like, break it down. Um, how does this fit into the Black Ops camp? You said it's a direct sequel, so are we going to see a lot of familiar faces? I forgot to watch it yesterday. 
Yeah, part of the fun in making this game was bringing back the iconic characters like Woods and Hudson and Mason and seeing how all those personalities mix with some of the new characters. So the campaign takes place in 1981, and we love that we've been able to have so many connections to the original Black Ops and really be that direct It's been years game. since I played the original Black uh, Ops. Now, one thing that I'm really excited about this is you're pushing the storytelling in kind of a new direction with some branches and some options about how you play through the campaign. Can you maybe walk us through your thinking there? Yeah, one of the driving forces from early in development was to say, let's take this Black Ops thrill ride and infuse it with some player choice and some player freedom. Anything we can do to give the player a little more ownership over their experience. So that starts with allowing the player to create their own character for the Cold War campaign. They can name them and pick a military background and really pretend they are that Black Ops soldier that they want to be. From there, we wanted to take some of our missions and infuse optional objectives, multiple paths, and some player choice moments inside some of those missions. And it was fun to find that balance between the hard driving Call of Duty action and these more non-linear experiences in some, inside some of the missions. Hmm. So with choice comes the, some of those choices earlier in the game, and some towards the end will actually shape the ending of the narrative of oh, the campaign. Okay. All right, so multiple endings to this game. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. That's what, that was one of the big things for us. It's like we love that Black Ops has always been willing to take risks, and we all know they did some of this in Black Ops 2, and with our story and with these features, we love paying homage to those early Black Ops games. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I remember the numbers. All right, uh, well, Dan, uh, we are excited to see more of it. I know multiplayer reveal is coming in September, but uh, uh -huh. since you got a switch there, maybe you can flip the switch on something exclusive for us. What are you going to say? Yeah, absolutely. This is really by the walls of the development studio. Oh. This is a scene from earlier in the game, and it's a critical point that really shows the narrative of the world, shows this threat that our heroes are going to be battling. Okay. So let's take a look. Alrighty then. Nineteen forty-three. Detailed information from the Manhattan Project was stolen from Los Alamos. By the Russian spy known as Perseus. Yeah. 1968, um. Vietnam War. An American made nuclear bomb from a U.S. firebase. Five days ago, while on a mission, we acquired intel that Perseus is in play again and planning an attack on the West. Perseus. The CIA's analysts consider him to be the single largest threat to the free world. Game looks good. Mr. Hudson, we're all aware of Perseus. We're also aware he's more myth than fact. I mean, personally, I think he's nothing more than the Russian boogeyman. General Haig, allow me to introduce the man who is soon to respond to that. CIA clandestine special officer, Russell Adler. He's one of the few people who even come close to capturing Perseus. Uh, Mr. Adler, why should we take this Perseus threat seriously? You don't have to, sir. <laughs> yeah, then a lot of innocent people are gonna die. Why do you say that? Sir, every time Perseus has come into play, it's shifted the balance of the Cold War. I remember that name. After 13 years of silence, if he's active, something big is gonna happen. Something that will affect the free world. Mr. President. Mr. President, this is Jason Hudson and Russell Adler. I know their names. Hey! Who do you think approved their last mission? Alright. Is the threat real? Yes, sir, we believe it is. Can you stop Perseus? We can, sir. I've already submitted the requisition for my team. Sir, their requests are highly irregular. Most likely illegal. If the press gets all... What the hell are you talking about? You know who we are? Every mission we go on is illegal. Sergeant Woods, plausible deniability is the backbone of our work. Al, we're talking about preventing an attack on the free men and women of the world. Give Mr. Adler whatever he wants. Gentlemen, you've been given an important task. Protecting our very way of life from a great evil. It's a really good impression. There is no higher duty. There is no higher honor. And while few people will know of your struggles, rest assured, 
the entire free world will benefit. Mm -hmm. I know you won't fail us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tonight we have some new game announcements for you guys Is as well, including this room? one, a new next-gen narrative action-adventure game from Reflector Entertainment in Montreal. It's called Unknown 9. The game tells the story of Haruna, a woman raised on the streets of India okay. and haunted by visions of her own death. Haruna struggles to understand her mysterious, innate abilities to manipulate the unseen. Wow. Check out this first look. Whew, I would have been wearing one of my gaming shirts today, but uh, 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 oh no. opening night live but the only part of the world in this uh, that um um it's night time in Europe that's the only part of the world right now which it's night time so um yeah cuz in America it's in the middle right, of the day the <laughs> here over here one but, of this uh, year's biggest games has been Doom Eternal tonight we've got an exclusive first look at the campaign expansion that's such a classic Ancient looking um, Gods part one. uh check this out uh, artwork right there for the new Doom game. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> I'm so glad Doom was able to make a comeback within the within these uh, past few years. I have a little bit of experience with Doom. Not that much. Me and my dad. He's probably played, um. There's a chance he's played some of the older games. Oh my. <laughs> Classic enemies. These same exact ones, that's awesome. Yeah. Huh. Oh gosh. I always wanted to play these newer games. Also, who the hell is that? The ancient Doom Eternal, The Ancient Gods Part 1. <laughs> 10 20 20. Is he in a green screen? 2020 room? marks the 25th anniversary of a legendary game studio, BioWare. BioWare? Casey Hudson and the team wanted to give everyone around the world a little taste of what's next. Hmm. Casey, over to you. Oh. Hey Jeff, it's great to see you again. You know, I'll be right back. I'm on the stage with turn the up. 2014 Game Awards. Turn up my AC. Accepting the Game of the Year for Dragon Age Inquisition. And since then, we've been imagining new ways to use next generation technology to bring the world and characters of Dragon Age to life. We're still in early production, but we thought it was time to give you the very first look at how Bioware's passionate team of developers are crafting this very special game. Time. 
time. So I'd love to see it grow up and turn from a from a company of 35 people to a company of more than 300 people. There's amazing people in the industry. There's amazing stories to be told with other people. I love that character so much. <laughs> <laughs> We're very experimental here at Bioware. So we're always coming up with new stuff. Um. <laughs> we're always trying to improve, innovate, and bring new characters to life for players and fans to enjoy. The world of Dragon Age really has got it all. It's got frontier stories, it's got mystery, it's got hard-boiled detective stories. And of course, it's all wrapped up in kind of a fantasy setting. You really feel like you're the hero in the Dragon Age world, and you're saving people. Dragon Age to me is a wonderful world to play in. I am really excited about the future of Dragon Age. <laughs> this is an original world, original flora, original wildlife, original I'm still here. That makes it fun to explore and discover. In the next Dragon Age, we get an opportunity to to see new things, new places, and interact with people who. I knew I had to wait for an announcement that I would um. Uh, I was gonna wait to step step out of camera during an announcement, which. What happens when you don't have power? Which I was um. What happens when the I can afford to miss. To address the issues. I could afford to not look at in the next installment are going to be stories that focus on the people around you and that you make. Uh, Something that we'll be looking forward to in Dragon Age is a really close relationship with game characters who really become real for you. I never you played Dragon Age. To either be loved or hated. Hmm. One of the best examples of that is Solus. Half the community wants to kill him, half the people want to marry him. They call me the Dread Wolf. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> what will they call you when this is over? I was recording from home. Bioware and EA has been using motion magic technology, and that makes it way more realistic. Oh, yeah. Looking at the characters and the way they walk and move and interact in the world. Yeah, motion capture is great. You want in that suspension of disbelief that this wonderful collection of digital pixels ow, ow. is actually a living, breathing soul. No, no, no. It's okay. That's the good kind of rumble. I with the creature design team as well. That's cool. So I do all like the big threats that you have to go up against. Hello. Everybody dies on my watch. Hey. For the wardens. Akamati! See, the big part <laughs> of what Dragon Age is as a franchise, the decisions you make can affect change in the world. Decision making can mean... Yeah, I was introduced to him through Crash Bandicoot, so... You know, Crash and Racing Nacho feels specifically, so... The only other work of his I was familiar with was um, um his role as Knack. That's a really that yeah, I don't really know what else he's done. To me, that potential is what gets you up in the world. It's a fantastic opportunity every time. What was I gonna say? Oh, <laughs> it's something about love creating enemies in, in B series, you know. Next up, it's time for something special. Back to the future? Back to the future, hold on. Whoa! Chris Floyd! <laughs> wow. Doc Brown. <laughs> He's old now. We know who you are, but what's your name here? I did come back from the future to this precise moment. <laughs> future Doc. <laughs> <laughs> We've lost Surgeon Simulator 2 right now. <laughs> and what exactly do you have to do with Surgeon Simulator? Oh my god. During the mid 20th century, some friends of mine from the Rye Shire University invented a state of the art medical training facility, otherwise known as the Surgeon Simulator <laughs> Training Program. Oh now, my gosh. 70 years later, we digitized the experience. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. You can access the program through your computer and then be medically trained on the comfort of your keyboard. And it's available as a <gasps> great Scott. <laughs> This very moment. <laughs> Tonight, I want a world premiere, a few examples of some of the incredibly successful 
test subjects who have already completed the course. Hmm. So you're saying a world premiere will save our future? Only time will tell. <laughs> and speaking of time, I'm off to another world premiere. Avengers 26, The Return of the Son of Thanos. Opening 2077. Huh. And with that, I leave the fate of the human race in your hands. Just make sure you play Circus Pitcher 2. Doctor's orders. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was awesome. I uh, did not expect a. Uh, Friggin' Sergeant Sugar to have a sequel. Where does this path go? Why their arm have to be so like stretched out and limp? Doc Brown introducing Jacksepticeye. Oh my god. Holy opening night live. Alright, well, if you thought that crossover, crossover was kind of crazy, wait until you get a load of this next game announcement that I don't think anyone probably saw coming. Check this out. What? Sound effect I first heard in the first, first time that I heard that was in Rayman 2. <laughs> oh shit! Bridge Constructor The Walking Dead. What's Bridge Constructor? <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Tonight is just the start of Gamescom 2020. Over the next three days, there are more streams from IGN and Web Media with in-depth looks at games, a digital cosplay contest, and some special new shows just for Gamescom. Your portal for all things Gamescom this year is Gamescom Now, which you can check out at right. Gamescom.global. Now, one game you'll hear more about later on IGN's classic characters that I love. Let me check guess. Let me guess. Happy Giant. In a world gone strange. One elite force stands against the dark. Wait a minute. Oh! These guys? Even they could use some help. Here, huh? step on this little beauty for a fact. The... Sam and yes. Sam and Max? Huh. I don't know that much about them to be honest with you. Huh. The return of Sam and Max. Yes. Alright. <laughs> and now it's time to say hello to my wonderful co-host for ONL from IGN. O &L. Please say hello to Sydney Goodman. Thank you, Jeff. What's up, everyone? I'm Sydney Goodman, and I am thrilled to be here. Gamescom is a fun event, and throughout the show tonight, I'll be telling you about all the different ways that IGN is involved in this year's festivities. But first, I have an award to announce. The winner of Best yeah. Nintendo Switch Game is Little, Little Nightmares 2. Huge congratulations. 
Like I said, IGN is going to be here for all of Gamescom with great shows such as Gamescom Studio, where you can find me and my co-hosts for all day long games content, interviews, dev talks, and more. Plus, we have Gamescom Awesome Indies, the show with and for indie developers. Okay. That premieres Saturday, August 29th at 7 p.m. Central European Time, so be sure to tune in for more announcements and special guests. And now, let's go back to Jeff for our cool. next big world premiere. Oh, jeez. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sid. Uh, we are so excited to see what's in the uh, the Gamecom studio and also Awesome Indies, and I'm going to be on the Daily Show tomorrow, so looking forward to that. All right, well, on to our next game. In the next World of Warcraft expansion, players will journey beyond the mortal world of Azeroth to a place where no living soul has set foot before. The Shadowlands, the afterlife of an entire Warcraft universe. The infinite realms of the Shadowlands are watched over by different factions, known as Covenants, each holding dominion over a different aspect of the afterlife. And depending on how someone lived their mortal life, they may end up as part of one of these Covenants when they cross over into the Shadowlands. Today, we're excited to give you a closer look at the noble and pure Kyrian Covenant from the realm of Bastion, who are charged with carrying the souls of the dead into the beyond. So sit back and get ready for the world premiere of Bastion, the first in Blizzard Entertainment's new four-part series of animated shorts called Afterlives. Enjoy. Afterlives. What? I, I don't care about Wolf Wolf. I'll be right back. He was my student. 
He betrayed us all. Show me. runs free on a mortal world with the power of the Maw itself in hand. Our realm is imperiled. Impossible. The Maw is inescapable. He must return to the path. If he had purged his life, we never would have known of this calamity. The path is flawed. Enough! The order of the Shadowlands depends on the execution of our eternal charge. You will abandon Is this still War of Warcraft? Course. I'm sorry, I had to... I'm back. Uh, I had to talk on the phone real quick. That was my dad calling me. It is still World of Warcraft. <laughs> like I said, I was able to take the phone call during an announcement in which I could afford to um, miss out on. Or I just straight up didn't care about like World of Warcraft. Never. So yeah, <laughs> picked the right time to leave to take a phone call. So yeah. Um. I was gonna go over to his house to watch Gamescom with him, but uh, uh, we weren't able to do that today because he's busy today. Watching does look neat. <laughs> I I seriously don't know what the hell I'm watching because I've been in the bathroom for like four minutes talking on the phone. <laughs> the I didn't feel like cutting the video. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. These videos are filmed as if I, as if I were filming a live stream. Completely unedited for the most part. But these aren't the kinds of videos I really want to put that much, uh, that much time and effort into um, post production, so yeah. My ears been itchy all afternoon. I just cleaned ears today, too. Yeah, it's still War of War, Warcraft, Shadowlands. It's still the same. I like the colors for the logo, though, I will say that. Hmm. All right, hope you guys enjoyed that exclusive look at Bastion. Now, I didn't really watch You can't wait to experience Shadowlands, and our friends at Blizzard want you to know the wait is almost over. Is there another trailer? Two, tra two trailers back to back? 10, 27, 20. Enter the Shadowlands. So that was all pre rendered stuff. That was all. That was all pre rendered cutscenes. Is what they just showed before, huh? I remember back when World of Warcraft used to be uh, kind of low poly. Uh, that was at a time where um, <laughs> I think that was during a time where like online computer games were, um, um, were still a little low poly, like the early to mid two thousands. Like, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm not talking about PC ports of games, I'm talking about like PC, like online exclusive games like this, yeah. PC ports of games have been going around since PC gaming was even very popular. Since like October the 90s 27th, or the early 2000s. Official. We have so much more opening night live still to go. Back when you would buy physical copies of PC ports. 
Much more. Stay tuned. All right. But now it's time for the announcement of a new universe that is coming to gaming for the first time with a project from a Canadian studio. Check this out. Who and what? They have returned. The hell is They corrupted. Divided. Uh. Conquered. Until finally, the gates of the celestial realm were thrown open. Our last remaining hope. The storm What the hell is this? Those wings. I have no idea how long this presentation is. <laughs> oh, Warhammer. Huh. It's coming on the Switch too. Uh, next year. I knew it! Now you guys may remember back in June I had some masked fun with my buddy Crash Bandicoot announcing Crash 4 It's About Time. With the game coming in October, Crash of course had to come back for opening night live. So yeah. let's out everybody. Crash Bandicoot! Hey! Costume Crash! What? Where's Costume Crash? Where? Costume Crash! The music from the game. I think this might be the theme song for Crash 4. What the? James Tom Robot? Yo, that's an actual, like, suit. Apparently didn't get the memo about games console. <laughs> Tell us more about what we just saw. I'm joined by Lou Stutter from Toys for Bob. Uh, Lou, w what did we see suit. there with uh, Crash and the games combat? Now they know it's a games combat. <laughs> uh, apparently he's not wandering around Cologne, but uh, what Crash he was hinting at was kind of our reveal of what we call flashback tapes. Oh, which are a brand new thing here today. This is what he looks so, like. Uh, how do these flashback levels kind of play into the overall Crash Four narrative? First time seeing his face. Yeah, so the way that the, the flashback tape levels work is that they are kind of a peak back in time oh. to the 90s when Neocortex was actually testing on Crash and Coco before the events of Crash Bandicoot oh, 1. Oh, really? And kind of these devious puzzle rooms that we've made. What? Uh, and they're really hard and they're really awesome and they're what? super creative and we can't wait to uh, get people's hands Perfect on them. castle. Yeah, no, I, I, I got to play a demo on this a few weeks ago and that was a challenge so I can't imagine um, how various these are. Um, how are they going to be sort of integrated into the game? Are they, are they optional, like offshoot stuff or how do you, how do you get to them? Sure. So players actually have to collect the flashback tapes in the levels themselves. Oh. Uh, they're an object that they can pick up. And to actually pick them up, they have to reach them in the level without dying. It's uh, kind of our homage to the death routes from the original trilogy. Death so routes have to reach these objects in the level, pick them up, and then once they get them, they'll get access to these unique levels. Huh. So beyond the pure challenge, uh, what other fun? So how how are these fun for players to kind of experience? What do they get to do in them? Natural crazy say natural now. <laughs> sure. So one of the things that we did was we actually used these as, like I said, puzzle rooms. Really kind of fun, nefarious, devious ways for Crash I to really see. express that pure. Play platforming kind of uh, aspect wow. of gameplay that we know and love about the franchise. But then, yeah. narratively for us, it was really cool to layer in kind of a unique perspective to the franchise. This huh. is the moment when Cortex is really excited about the prospect of Crash being on his team, because Crash was originally created by Cortex, yeah. and so this is a weird point in time that's never really been explored in the games before. Huh. Awesome. All right. Well, Crash 4, it's about time. Looks phenomenal. Yeah. Blue. Uh, we cannot wait to check it out uh, in October. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Just one month. Yeah, thanks for having me. Awesome. All Just right. We'll be right month. back after this for more Gamescom Opening Night Live. <sighs> I have become terror.
That's all they really showed, huh? <laughs> Is this a commercial? So they're t they're taking the death route concept and applying them to a brand new kind of the collectible. Where um yeah, it's really cool. Um, how they talk about this more uh, before even death routes themselves, but yeah. <laughs> And this ties into the story of the game, too. It ties into the, the lore of the series, too. Like I said before, um, this is looking to be the best Crash Bandicoot story in a very long time. And probably the best Crash... Uh, the, the most, um... Uh, probably the best Crash Bandicoot story uh, thus far. So, um... I feel like, um... Uh, uh, like, the narratives of um, individual games... Wasn't really, um, how do I say this? I feel like narratives of individual games, the actual stories, haven't started to get, um, I can't fucking talk. <laughs> of, of Red Bull commercials. <laughs> Welcome to the hype. Oh. The hype. A contender. Let me mute the game. I feel like that has a, Crash Bandicoot ga uh, games haven't had like really rich and well thought out stories for individual games until I crashed with Sandy, and so yeah, and then uh, Titans Mine have Mind of Mutant also had really fun stories. Um, as um mediocre as Mind of Mutant is well known to be. I think we can. I, I think the story of Mind Over Mutant is still the best part of the whole game, <laughs> and uh, the music too. Um, I never played Mind Over Mutant. It's the only. It's the only Crash Bandicoot game I'm. I have never played in the in the in the main line. So, yeah. I. Um, anyway, I'm getting a little off topic. What the hell are we watching? Captain Tsubasa. Welcome to Necromunda. I can see you're new here. Let me get you up to speed. The Underhive's named well. I don't know what else to talk about. So... Uh, so they only gave us a little, just a little bit of taste. Just a little taste of Crash 4. They only showed, like, one small, uh, brand new piece of information. And they only showed a little bit of it. And, um... Oh, might I say, Cortex Castle now reminds me of how the castle levels looked in Rayman Legends. <laughs> um, the interiors remind um, remind me of uh, their interiors remind me a lot of of uh, Rayman Legends castles, and <laughs> you know, from like the first world of Rayman Legends, Teensy's in trouble. Um, if you've ever played that game. But anyway, um, great game. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's still a lot we don't know about. Um, you know, I'm probably going to be talking about Crash 4 for the next five minutes during all these commercials. <laughs> I could probably go for a bathroom break right about now. But, I mean, I don't need to, but... Hypothetically speaking, I can use this time to use it. Is it commercials? Yet there's still new announcements. That's really weird. The future of the games, além de realidades virtuais extremamente fidedignas e realistas, eu acho que também se encontra em formas mais expressivas e absurdas, quebrando cada vez mais esses paradigmas de formato de videogame que a gente tem e sendo usado mais do que nunca. So, in other news, I Lamar Wilson quite bright and quite online. The next generation of console will clearly allow AAA and indie developers to build more creative-driven games that I hope will cover more diverse subjects. I want to play all kinds of stories about people and places, both real and imagined. I want um, comedy games, I want autobiographical games. I really want to see what people can do with media. No futuro dos games, eu vejo uma evolução ao meter a gráfica. I want to say something, but I don't want to talk over these people. <laughs> um, 
It's hard to it's hard to it's hard to do that when watching when watching something live, trying to commentate over something while well, well, not trying to talk over people. That's not easy. You know, one of the things I love about opening night is that we can show you the biggest game in the industry and also smaller titles that should be on your radar. So pay attention to this next game. It comes from a team of two in Sweden, Tuxedo Labs. Over the past three years, developer Dennis Gustafsson has built his own game engine to realize his vision for a fully destructible game world. What he's building has absolutely blown me away, so I asked Dennis to prepare a special trailer just for tonight. I hope you're equally inspired by the ideas in this next game. Definitely one to watch. Teardown. Teardown, huh? Oh, um... Wait, what the hell is this? The... What the... Huh. Huh. Oh, this looks really fun. It's like... It's like the opposite of Minecraft. <laughs> Everything is all like pixelated looking, but you can't really tell that from a distance. I couldn't tell that from a distance. Yeah, there, and yet there's still all this realistic lighting, and uh, Minecraft does have that now, but. What about, what about the water? <laughs> is the water pixelated? Tear down. That game looks fun. I'm not gonna lie. Um. Last year at Opening Night Live, we announced Little Nightmares 2 to the world. Well, the team at Tarsier Studios hasn't shown anything since, but that changes right now. I do, Here I do know this game. Here is a first look at the gameplay of Little Nightmares 2, which is coming next February, with more to come throughout the week at Gamescom, including a live demo on Gamescom Studio tomorrow. Hmm. Yeah, I, I recognize these characters. So anyway, I've been holding on to the stop for like five minutes. I'm going to fi- I'm going to finally start replaying Crash Bandicoot and Saint Trilogy tomorrow, actually, on, on Friday, August 28th. Ever since Crash 4 was announced, I, um, uh, I finally found, I finally found a really good reason to replay the Insane Trilogy, because, um, ah. Uh, Ever since I first played the Insane Trilogy back in January 2019, I, I was like, ooh, I cannot wait to play this again. I, I wasn't sure when, but now I have an opportunity to. And when Crash 4 was announced back in late June, um, yeah, it gave me a good reason to re replay those games. And, that, and back then, I was, I had, um, I made a plan to, to start playing it, like, at, uh, by, like, the middle of August. And, um, well, this game was a real neat. So, yeah, I, um, uh, I had planned to start replaying the Insane Trilogy about like the middle of August, but um, uh, I've been trying to jump into some other video games too. So um, I uh, hell, I was still trying to unlock a whole bunch of shit for Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel, because like I said, because like I said before, that game has just as much stuff to unlock as in that as there is in a Super Smash Bros. game. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. But, but but I guess not really because that's the reason why I would still play CTR at, uh, all the time. I'm trying to see what I can unlock every every day. But now I'm playing it tomorrow. I'm playing Crash Insane Trilogy again tomorrow on August 28th at the very latest because I cannot afford to wait any longer than tomorrow. Oh WWE. WWE Hall of Famer Jerry the King. King Lawler, and I'm reuniting with my old buddy Mauro Ronaldo to bring you all the over the 
top action in WWE 2K Battleground. Oh. I haven't seen King in a long time. He wasn't... He doesn't do commentary for WWE anymore. This arcade-style video game is over-the-top outrageous with over 70 WWE superstars and legends rolling cool. it out like never before. <laughs> oh, no. Hold on to your toupee, world. Look out below. WWE is L-I-T. You know, I'm a little more old-school than Moro, so I can't wait to see these WWE legends teach these kids a thing or two. <laughs> you know what? Here's a closer look at the insane action. Oh, cool. It's a great evening for WWE action. Yeah. Oh, wow. Take that, Moro. Man, it's so good to see the Bella Twins. Be because it... Now, let's keep this party rolling with another matchup. Oh, oh, oh let me take it. Sure. What's the matter with you, legends? This is just an example of the pandemonium that you're going to experience when you head to the battlegrounds. That's a big toy hammer. Oh, I can't believe my eyes. Seth Rollins delivers the stop. What a night. What a night. This is the great I haven't seen Marvel when I was on the barrel one time either. Pre order WWE 2K Battlegrounds today and brawl without limits. Because, yeah, it only took me about a month to play through the Intentional in okay. its entirety. Oh, sorry, Mara, I know that you're lying. <laughs> so, it only take. It's not gonna. Hello again. It's gonna take me just about the same amount of time. So, let's get right this, down to The it. second time around. The winner so. of the best action adventure game is Watch Dogs Legion. I don't even know how long this presentation is. Squadrons out. I think I've heard of that game. Ugh. So yeah, um, because usually it only takes about a week to 100% each of those three games, so... And when I take about a couple days, um, of a break in between games, and, uh, yeah, it will take me... It only take... It only take me about a month, uh, once again. So, uh, that's why I'm kind of cutting it close a little bit, but at the same time, I trust myself to, uh, not, um, cut it very close again. So, yeah. Well, Crash Bandicoot Gaming Marathon will start, will, will start tomorrow. <laughs> and, uh, because what happened two years ago, I don't want to repeat what happened two years ago. Where I was trying to play um ev every Super Smash Bros. game up to ultimate release. You can keep to the beat right here on IGN. We've turned the single biggest show in gaming into five. Gamescom now is your virtual show floor with up to the second live coverage. Gamescom Daily Show, Gamescom's first ever late night talk show. Our Gamescom Awesome Indie Show, the freshest deep cuts in indie gaming. Oh. And finally, the Gamescom Best of Show, including the Gamescom Award. Gamescom 2020 is available on IGN and wherever you stream Gamescom now. And now it is time to talk about that best action game winner, Star Wars Squadrons. This is a new immersive space combat right. game from Motive Studios that delivers the ultimate Star Wars pilot fantasy. We miss those. In Squadrons, you'll suit up and fly for both the New Republic and the Galactic Empire mm -hmm. across intense 5v5 multiplayer battles, as well as an all-new authentic single-player story set after the events of Star Wars Episode VI, Return of the Jedi. Okay. Today, we'll get a glimpse of what Squadron's story has to offer by taking a brief look at one of the single-player missions featuring some light narration by the Motive team. Let's check it out. So yeah, um, two years ago, um... For my Super Smash Bros. Marathon, where I played every Smash game up to Ultimate's release. Oh, it's Leia. So yeah, that was I cut that marathon way too close. I wasn't able to have any time any time to serve between Smash Four and Ultimate. Hell, I wanted to have um when I was done with Smash Four, I waited till the very to the very last day. 
and I played, and I would wind up playing Ultimate the very next day when it was released. So, because, uh, yeah, it's one of the only video games I've ever bought day one, let alone pre-ordered. And, Cra and, and, and uh, Crash 4 will be, will be another one of those rare exit cases where... Yeah, Crash 4 will be the very first um, Crash Bandicoot game I ever buy on day one. I wasn't even able to do that for the Insane Trilogy or Nitro Fueled. Or I had to wait much, much later to play those. I had to wait a year and a fucking half to play the Insane Trilogy at home. Playing it demos at GameStop, yeah, I did that. But uh, I had to wait a whole year and a half before I could get my own PS4 to play Crash Bank with the Intentional Trilogy, which my dad got me for me for Christmas of so December of 2018. And um, I had to wait like uh, almost a whole year, like a solid 11 months, before I could play Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled. And I, I don't want that to happen again. So. I mean, yeah, I'll definitely have the money to get it. That's not the that's not the issue. Um, I again, I have no idea how long the show's gonna be. There's some other games I want to play today. Oh, it's a blockade runner. How long is this video? It's over an hour now, ain't it? Because, yeah, this, this video clip will, will stop once I... I love Star Wars games. I played all kinds. From Force, and, Force Unleashed, Lego Star Wars. And if you played a little bit of the Battlefront games. And not to mention, I'm a Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. That's also really fun. If I have time, I'll replay that at some point. Because my my gaming roadmap is already is already booked for the rest of the year, I think. So, well, at least up till November. Yeah, I haven't made any plans for what games I'm going to play in December, so there's a plan. Ow, shit, fucking hat. That is not all EA has to share from a galaxy far, far away today. At Star Wars Galaxy Edge, you can enter the world of Batu, where you can visit them or jump into the Millennium Falcon on a run to Smuggler's Cove. It was this incredible adventure at Disneyland Resort and Walt Disney World Resort that inspired the Sims' latest game pack. The Sims? The Sims is back? Yo, The Sims? <laughs> My aunt used to love playing The Sims. I used to love watching her play. I'm, I'm glad The Sims has, has still been going strong throughout this year. Like, the series hasn't died. Like, this, is, this The Sims is a long-running franchise. <laughs> a purple astro droid. <laughs> you know, I can't actually pause this live stream. I just thought I just thought about that. Why that didn't occur to me until just now, I don't know. That's the um uh that's this that's this that's this um imperial spherical astro asteroid. I forgot what that dude's name is. Cantina. For the lightsaber. One of my favorite franchises ever, Star Wars.
say so, um uh, I uh I didn't react to the second hour on camera because I didn't really want to upload a two hour video. <laughs> um, I've never uploaded a, a video that's two hours. Um, not even my longest videos are that long. They're very close to two hours, like hour an hour and fifty minutes. My longest video is, is a my longest video of all time is a gaming video. And it's like for Tower Biased, for SMX Tower Biased. I don't remember which one it is, but uh, that video is like uh, an hour and fifty minutes. <laughs> And my, the second longest is the um, my Myrtle Beach vlog, which is like like an hour and 40 minutes or, or something like that. But, yeah. So, um, I don't know. I just wanted to react to this because I knew Crash Bandicoot was going to be in it. Uh, I, I, I knew something Crash Bandicoot related was going to be in it because I've reacted to every, every single Crash Bandicoot 4 announcement willing to release. And I've also reacted to Super, every Smash Ultimate announcement every major one that's so I'm keeping those streaks alive so and to this day I've got kept a smash I've kept a streak for smash ultimate for reacting to every major announcement on camera so yeah um that's it that's gonna be it for this video if you like this video then don't forget to subscribe like the um video if you liked it and ring the bell to be notified of future videos I make stay tuned for um uh, some more animation reviews um yeah so um, yeah. The fact that this camera is not married is a little trippy, but oh well. Um, once again, I'm Max Swimmer, aka AP3 Jump. Thank you so much for watching until the end. That's it for me, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah.